speaker here, uh, Professor In Sung Choi, who is a professor of organic chemistry at Harvard University and the Department of Chemistry at the uh, KAIST back in uh, Korea. Uh, this is the uh, pointer, forward, backward, oh, okay. and pointer. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thanks for your introduction. Uh, because my time is already up, because I, I was supposed to speak only for, from 2.55 and 3.05, I'm, I'm gonna sort of fasten my, gonna fasten my, my talk. And what I'm gonna share uh, with you today is, is this concept of shell, cell and shell structure that we have been working on for the last several years. And the, when you, this is pointed. So what we, we, we've been working on is we actually encapsulate or code individual living cells and, and to, to, to sort of enhance the tolerance of the, the living cells inside against external harmful, harmful sort of stresses or aggressors. And the reason why we are working on this is that there are in nanomedicine, there are a variety, variety of different kinds of applications where you, you actually need living cells for your functional, functional materials or entities. So, and also you need to sort of the in, enhance the, the, the viability of living cells under stretch or transfer or, or other sort of ma manipulation in vitro. So we need to sort of enhance viability of the individual living cells, especially mammalian cells to in, 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 in the daily life or laboratory settings. So, this, so what, again, what we are doing here is that we actually encapsulate these individual living cells with the, these artificial these sort of shells, and then as 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 the organizer as the organizer said, I was trained as a chemist, so I don't have any that much applications in clinical nanomedicine. I'm gonna just wanna show some chemistry point of view for for making nanomaterials or biomaterials for possible applications to to nanomedicine. So the, uh, this is first one of the first examples of shell and shell structure that we published in nine. Oh, Quite about more, it's about less than ten years ago, about eight years ago, where actually we encapsulate the individual the yeast cells with the silica. Silica is a kind of a glass. So uh, when you and also at the same in the same year, the Austrian bio, microbiologist found found this type of the the resting site of a ciliate, where you can see that this granular silica structure outside. And then, well, what they found is that they, in, under the sort of harmful stresses in, in, in nature, these species actually form the silica structure outside as a, at outmost shells. So what I want to say here is, in nature, this type of structure actually generates a formed in, 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 in through the biological evolution in response to the, the external stresses. So once sort of living systems, living, living species actually feel external harmful stresses, some, some actually organisms or, or cells actually transform their states to those kind of the structure or states where they actually make some kind of coat or the, uh, and a durable coat to withstand that kind of the stresses. Here, what we did is that we simply just formed those kind of cell in shell structure. And what you can anticipate here is that you can might increase the viability of these cell in shell structures under so sort of harmful stresses. So there are a variety, variety of different kinds of examples where you can find enhanced the viability uh, under harmful stresses where you can see that the mold, mold Nutrition, nutrition here. So when you when you store the cell in cell structure in, in pure water at the decreased temperature, say four degrees of Celsius, and then when you when you measure cell viability after one month, you can see huge increase in cell viability. Which means once you can form this kind of cell in cell structures, you can increase or enhance cell viability. Again, there are another examples where you can see that well, this type of cell in shell structure actually withstand the enzymatic attack, or where in this case light case, due to that small little porosity of these artificial shells. And also, you can you can make sort of heat resistant the artificial shells where when you use the the silica titania hybrid inorganic structures. So, but what's important here is that again, when I, when I said that this, this kind of cell in cell structures, what's important is a cell, functional cells. What we're gonna make of the cell in cell structure is that we're gonna use these functional cells 
after some some period of time of storage in in certain point time, they let's say one minute, one hour, or one week, or or one month, or several years maybe, and then one and then your sort of storage actually ends. You have to actually use functional cells inside. So. Uh, in other words, what I'm making here is that is, is, is a kind of the micrometric Iron Man. Because what's more important is the cells inside, not the shells. So if, if the, when you make the artificial shells, and then after a certain period of time, when, if, if the cell inside uh, uh, is die, and that is like a sort of the, the sort of, sort of the sort of the fancy suit in, in Iron Man, the movie of Iron Man, fancy suit without the Tony Stark, because Tony Stark is kind of functional cells. So you have to sort of maintain cell viability for a certain period of time, and then you have to use cells inside. So how can you use cells inside? So once you make this kind of cytoprotective artificial shells for individual cells, after a certain period of time, Maybe you have to break up the shells to use functional cells, right? And also another maybe sort of approach to use these cell cells inside is well, I have well maybe you can main, oops, you can maintain this sort of oh, antigen antibody interactions without the, not with these cytoprotective shells. So first approach is using. Well, variety of different kinds of materials. So once you form these, uh, these cytoprotective the shells, and then you can break these shells to to use to expose the functional cells to outside. So these actually demonstrations has been, have been conducted in 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 in, vit in vitro, meaning that in, in, in flask. So if you want to use this kind of cell structures in the body, for for example, like a nanomedicine, well, that shell, this shell should should. Broke, should be broken up inside in your body, somehow under physiological conditions or biological stimuli. It's, it's, that is really, really, really tough. Another possible approach is using or for keeping this antigen antibody or the interactions at, at cell surfaces, or you can also keep this sort of cytokine secretion inside your body. Uh, while protecting cells from enzymatic attack or other sort of attack in your body. So that, for example, uh, these are the one of the examples where you can use cells with, well, in cell therapy. For, uh, NK cell uh, has been studied for cancer cell therapy where you, when the NK cell is actually sort of extracted, isolated from a patient or a donor, and then it's expanded, manipulated, expanded, and then it was, it is, it's, it's re-injected, uh, in, 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 which is infused into patient. So what I want to do here is that we actually increase cell viability in vitro during manipulation or storage, and then we once once this this sort of the after infusion in in, in a patient, uh, if there is anti antibody interaction it is maintained, and you can use this uh, NK or T cells or, or lymphocyte for for the, the the cell therapy. So. In this case, we use a sort of porous, oops, porous titania, titanium oxide, titanium dioxide cells, and then you see that there is a lot of the porosity is really big, and then which means you can you can maintain antigen antibody interactions. And I'm going to skip this sort of these characterizations. And, and then once you form this sort of the titanium shells in, outside the jerky cell, we use a jerky T cells as a model in this case. You can see that the huge, not that huge, about the twofold increase in viability for, for the, for after two weeks in, in serum free non cultural conditions. And also you see that the heat resistance or after forming this, the titania structures. Uh, and then, uh, luckily, when you use the titanium or titanium oxide the shells outside uh, in, or, or individual the jerky T cells, we, we, we actually could maintain the antigen-antibody interactions. Uh, especially jerky cell has uh, the, the CT3, the antigen for that sort of the anti-cancer kind sort of properties or functions, and you see that this sort of blue the uh, no green, the rings means there is a, their interaction is really maintained at the cell surfaces also. So um, the interleukin secretion is also maintained. 
uh, compared to native, compared with the native circuits, as you can see that uh, the sort of reasonable sort of secretion of, 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 of interleukin-2 upon the, upon the activation of the circuits by using this kind of the, the, the chemicals or the, the bead. Bead is a, actually is, is, is a kind of model for the, the other cells, so you, you can actually maintain the sort of biological activities while protecting these jerky T cells individually under in vitro or in vivo conditions. So, so what I, what I, so well, time is limited. Really, you mean it's 10 minutes. So what, what, what I wanted to convince you is that you can use these cell and cell structures or micrometric ion man for your, your applications in nanomedicine, including cell therapy. Okay, thank you. If there is one burning question for Dr. Cho, we'll take it. Otherwise, we'll move over to the uh, third speaker. We're already running 15 minutes late. No, okay. <laughs> okay, so no burning question. Of course, Dr. Choi will be around, so you can meet with him also later on. I 